So welcome everybody. Uh, I will move from United States to the international level and I will talk about uh, a framework convention on tobacco control and how it applies or whether it applies to uh, to e-cigarettes but uh, uh, maybe before starting I, I should I should explain what I meant by uh, this uh, Schrodinger cat uh, because some of you might be no, not aware of the ex of this expression uh, this is a kind of paradox in in physics when you try to transpose uh, uh, a quantum physics at the macro level, you can end up in the situation that you've got a cat which is uh, dead and alive at the same time. And my impression is that the situation with e-cigarettes under FCTC is exactly the same. Uh, you could quali classify e-cigarettes under the convention into five different categories. Uh, and so at the same time, it could be a tobacco product, at the same time, it could be sui generis product. Uh, or pharmaceutical product, uh, and I will explain how, how this is possible. Uh, so the plan of the presentation, uh, first I would like to say a couple of words about the convention itself, and then uh, uh, concentrate on how e-cigarettes were treated in the context of the convention. Uh, then I will try to explain, and this will be the core of my presentation, why there is such a heterogeneity of, uh, of classifying e-cigarettes within the FT, FTCC, FTCC, F, FCTC, and then I will conclude. Uh, two research questions which I ask is, uh, does the FCTC apply to cigarettes uh, in the first place? Uh, and if, if, if it applies to which provisions? And the second one is, is it possible for the conference of the parties of the FCTC to regulate those products? So I suppose you are all aware about the, uh, about the convention adopted in 2005, uh, I mean, sorry, entered into force in 2005, adopted in 2003. Uh, currently, 180 uh, members, uh, the, I mean, the treaty with one of the broadest membership uh, um, all around the world. Uh, it sets standards for tobacco products. Uh, uh, it's very general since this is a framework convention and the details of specific provisions are provided uh, by guidelines that are adopted by the, by the conference of the parties. Uh, in principle, the convention applies to tobacco products. It's absolutely silent about e-cigarettes. Uh, um, so you could conclude that, okay, it does not apply because it does not mention e-cigarettes. It's only about tobacco products. Here is the definition of tobacco products. You, you, you also see that it does not fit nicely uh, with what, uh, what, what, what we understand as an e-cigarette. Uh, uh, first of all, because e-cigarettes or liquids are not made of, uh, and secondly, because they're not used for smoking, but rather vaping. Uh, having said this, it doesn't mean that the convention does not apply to e-cigarettes, because, uh, as I said, it's very general, so the, the different provisions are formulated in a very general manner, and using different techniques that are normally used when you interpret international treaties, uh, you can actually come to the conclusion that, yes, the convention applies to e-cigarettes. Uh, so what is the practice of the FCTC Secretariat and uh, the Conference of the Parties? The issue appeared for the first time in 2010. There was a short, brief discussion. Uh, afterwards, there were several reports, both prepared by WHO and, uh, and FCT Secretariat. 2004, uh, and also a number of decisions that were adopted by the COP uh, in very soft language. So the COP would invite the parties to do something. It would not oblige the, the, the parties to uh, introduce specific uh, type of regulation. What is important in 2004, conference of the party uh, proposed or invited the, the, the parties to the convention to consider uh, um, e-cigarettes either as tobacco product, medicinal product, consumer product, or other category as they uh, find uh, uh, necessary uh, and provided in this context some general, uh, general guidelines. The position of the FCTC secretariat corresponds with the stance of the, of the conference of the parties and there is a report from 2014 in which report the secretariat says that you could cl classify e-cigarettes as tobacco products uh, as object in the form of tobacco products which appeal to minors, uh, as product contributing to nicotine addiction, or as indirect form of discrimination. So it's a very strange situation because you've got single product and you, it actually can fit into four different uh, categories, actually six categories I just mentioned, uh, two most important. So the question, is it possible? Is it possible to be dead and alive at the same time? Is it possible to be a tobacco product 
uh, and be an object to, uh, that appeals to the miner uh, uh, or the product that affects the, the level of nicotine addiction. Uh, and what you need to remember that depending how you classify e-cigarettes, so if you classify as a, as, a, as, a cig as a tobacco product, the convention will simply apply. Uh, however, if you classify e-cigarettes as an object uh, uh, that appeals to minor, uh, the convention will apply, but will apply with very specific obligation. You need to ban it. Okay? So the classification is very important. So how come that it's possible that the, 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 the convention secretariat proposed that you could actually fit e-cigarettes into four different categories? Uh, and I mean, you, you, they cannot be classified at the same time in two categories because as I said, tobacco products, you are simply subject to the obligation of the convention. Uh, object that uh, appeals to minors, it's simply banned. Uh, so is it correct from the point of view of, of international law? And this was the, 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 the most interesting issue for me since I'm, I'm, I'm an international lawyer. Uh, and the answer is yes. So we can have a cat that is dead and alive at the same time. Uh, how this is done in practice? So the most common way is that the parties, when they sign the agreement or afterwards, they simply declare that they will understand certain terms within, for, in the international convention in a specific manner. So this is the easiest way how you can uh, have one expression within the convention and then, I don't know, hundreds of different understanding depending on the party, which is the party, depending on the state, which is the party to the convention. So this would be the easiest way. Unfortunately, there, is, there, there are no interpretative declarations. So I went through the database. None of the countries made any declaration with respect to e-cigarettes. So what are the other options? The second option is that, uh, I mean, international law operates slightly differently than, than the national law. In national law, you've got a definition. Uh, you, you simply read the definition, and the definition is, every, uh, is the same for everyone who is uh, uh, who, who, who is located within the country. But with international law is different because each member state, each party to the convention may interpret. And of course there are mechanisms in international law that you can remove the differences uh, in interpretation. One of the way is the adoption of the decision by the governing body, in this case uh, COP, that will simply say this is the correct this is the correct interpretation, and this is simply not correct interpre interpretation. But until you have such kind of decision on the side of the COP, the countries may go in different direction using the traditional methods for treaty interpretation and come, for example, to the conclusion that e-cigarettes actually fit the definition of, of tobacco products. Why? Because if you concentrate more not on the text, and you saw the text of the provision, if you concentrate more on the objective of the convention, it's quite easy to come to the conclusion from the point of interpretation of international law that e-cigarette is, uh, that you actually have an act of smoking and the nicotine which is derived in order to make a liquid uh, comes from tobacco and as a consequence you can, you can classify uh, this as a tobacco product. Of course, you can do other tricks. So you can classify this as an object that appeals to minors and is a form of advertisement, again, using a traditional method of, of, of interpretation. Uh, since there is no decision, uh, the, the, the diversity of the definition and the differences between the parties, in my opinion, will, uh, uh, will stay with us for, for some time. So conclusion. Uh, uh, since, because of the formulation of relevant FCTC provisions and because of the complex nature of e-cigarettes, as well as the unwillingness of the conference of the parties to take a decisive stance on, the, on, on, on those products, you could expect that we will still have a regulatory heterogeneity uh, at the international level and the countries will decide referring to the uh, FCTC uh, and will classify those products into the different categories. It's perfectly legal normal from the point of view of international law. I think eventually COP will need to take a, a stance on this, but we'll, we'll probably wait for this for some time. Uh, according to me, the preferable approach is not to classify this as uh, e-cigarettes as tobacco products, but as sui generis. And you, you could actually, if you look at the latest decision of the COP, you've got the indication that the COP is moving in this direction. Thank you very much.